Uh, it's not going well in terms of the existing user base, the sorts of people that love to consume you, news like you and me, Bev. But that's not the point. The point is for Elon Musk to completely change what Twitter was, turn it into something called a super app, which is very popular in a lot of Asian countries where you can do banking, you can do all sorts of things other than just share news and short messages. So, yes, it's trashed the Twitter brand, but Elon Musk is trying to do something quite different with the app. So from his perspective, it's going great. He's cut costs and people don't talk about Twitter as much anymore. Yes, they don't talk about Twitter, but... In the, in the trashing of the brand, he's lost, I would imagine, a lot of trust if he is going to parlay this into this one-stop shop that he thinks is going to be a winner. Absolutely. And that's part of a broader trend on the internet where anyone who is using Google or another search engine will be realising that you see a lot more junk out there right now. It's harder to find the good information. So, yes, that's very difficult uh, for anyone who is trying to search for that good information. But in that sense, Elon Musk is, is struggling with a bigger tide. It's actually not all just about him in this case. Yeah, indeed. Let's look at Threads that was launched by Mark Zuckerberg. It sort of was, you know, straight from Instagram. Um, it got, what, 100 million vote, uh, users within sort of a week, but that doesn't seem to have gained any traction. Yes, so he was fast out of the gate. But, and I will count myself in this group of people, uh, there's not so much engagement when you look at it a month later and maybe a year later down the line. Uh, so one of the things there is that users don't have a lot of control over what they see in the Threads app. It's all based on Meta's algorithm and the algorithm is quite successful. They've made it work at Instagram, but it's not necessarily what the people who were fleeing Twitter were looking for. So there's been a big drop off in the number of people using the app and the way they use it. And so that's going to make it really hard for Mark Zuckerberg to actually monetize it and turn it into a profitable business. Yeah. You know, as you pointed out, us news junkies really loved Twitter. It was where you went for breaking news. Even us as an organization at the ABC, we were rethinking our relationship with X. Is it just time to face the fact that that platform that we so loved and so many people enjoyed being on is, is really just a thing of the past? Yeah, I'm struggling with that one too. I don't want to give up those 85,000 followers, but then I don't notice many of them talking to me anymore. So that's the big question everyone is going to have to ultimately answer. And it's part of this broader move in towards AI. So we're once again fragmenting this information landscape. If it already felt like overload, AI is going to increase those feelings. And it's just going to be a really tough time as people try and figure out where they get their information. And as we learn that we have to spend more time verifying it because your ability to trust what you're seeing online now is going to, to keep decreasing. Doesn't mean the good stuff isn't out there, but people are going to have some tough choices and they're going to have to spend some more time figuring it out. Yeah, and to your point, you've done some reporting at Axios about AI and it does seem that the more people hear about it, they're sort of excited about it, but they do have that issue with trust. How do you think that, what is the way forward? Well, there are going to have to be regulatory guardrails and that's not popular. People don't love regulation and the government being in their lives. But when we look at some of the downsides of AI, because it's such a powerful technology, majorities around the world, including in Australia, are simply saying we'd rather have some government oversight. We don't trust the tech companies to do this all on their own. And even if we don't love the government, we think there needs to be another voice and some other eyes on all of this. So it will take some time for laws to actually pass through parliaments, but I think that's absolutely where this is headed. And to bring it back to those social media companies, because they made some mistakes, because they lost our trust over the last 10 years, that seeded the ground for people demanding this regulation. So you're going to see the next couple of years a lot of laws about how to regulate AI and tech more generally. And so then operators like Musk, will they have no choice but to abide with it? Because at the moment, X is just a free for all. Absolutely. And the big players in big tech try to get out of laws all the time. Elon Musk doesn't even pay his rent some of the time. So they will appeal these laws. They will do what they can to skirt them. Uh, but if enough governments work together and if they're well thought out and really targeted at what the problems actually are and, and not a power grab from the politicians themselves, then yes, Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, they'll have to comply. 
comply is one word, but what on earth do you make of this much touted cage fight? It's hard to believe these two multi-billionaires are sort of got this little sideshow going on. Well, they have a track record of making improbable promises and sometimes <laughs> delivering on them. Zuckerberg is big into extreme sports, so I don't have any doubt he could physically complete the challenge. But the real message here is Elon Musk treats uh, the media and everyone watching him in the same way that Donald Trump does. So whether you like or you hate Donald Trump, I'm not asking you to make a decision on that point. I'm just saying that's the way Elon Musk runs these discussions and toys with people's attention. So a man who says he might need surgery is probably not a man who is going to do a cage match in Las Vegas is my <laughs> final thought for your viewers. <laughs> and on that note, we will bid you adieu. Great to see you as always. Thanks so much. Thank you.